When I was a boy, there was bamboo growing on a farm next door to us, and we used to go in and harvest and, and make kites out of the kite frames. They're very resilient. And in the valley at Arimba, there were quite a few farms there with little patches of bamboo, and they were just a natural resource that you could use for virtually anything. And that was when I f first thought about bamboo. But then when I had the wrecking yard, I was working in Japan at a place called Yawata. It's in between Kyoto and Osaka, and that's the capital of car wrecking in Japan. But in amongst all the wrecking yards, there's a huge forest of bamboo. And I was up there once, and getting a bit homesick, so I wandered into this forest, and it was a wet day and a misty rain, and it was just absolutely magic. And that, I think, is where the bamboo captured me. From then on, I thought, right, this is the way I want to live. It's just so peaceful and serene, and if we can put that into an agricultural product, it's got to go. And that's where it all started. Bamboo, it's probably the one most environmentally friendly plant on earth. If you go into Asia, you can see it's the backbone of Asian culture. It doesn't matter if you're in Indonesia or China, any of the Asian countries, it's there. If you took bamboo out of those countries, the whole place would fall over. There's an old saying with bamboo, the uses are just limited by your imagination. You can use it for virtually anything. If you look around, if, particularly if you've got a property, and you can see you can replace conventional timbers with bamboo, be it a hedge to screen out the neighbours, a plant to grow edible shoots, um, landscaping, and on and on and on. That's just with the plants. Then you take it a step further, where you harvest your poles, and the poles are processed, particularly in China. You can get floorboards, you can literally get bamboo socks. There's 92% bamboo fibre in a bamboo sock. And they're the most comfortable sock you'd ever wear. Then you've got all your handicrafts, your structures. It just goes on and on and on. And if anybody's seen in Hong Kong or even in mainland China, you'll see 50-storey buildings there with bamboo scaffolding. It's just unbelievable. And why they use the bamboo is, if a typhoon comes in, the bamboo will bend. If you use steel scaffolding on those, it'll bend and it won't come back. You lose it. So bamboo is a very versatile product. You can, the bamboo leaf has got around about 24 to 26% protein. And if your cattle are a bit hungry, they'll graze on it. And what I'd really like to do is plant broadacre paddocks full of running bamboos, small runners, they grow about a metre high and the cattle can graze that off and it's because of the high nutrition level in the leaf you'd fatten them up in no time. Bamboo is like any horticultural crop, it is easy to control, even runners. You can put your running plant in, if you don't want it to go too far you just dig a trench about knee deep and 20 or 30 centimetres wide and put a rhizome barrier, like a bit of old conveyor belt, or there are commercial rolls of uh, rhizome barriers readily available. One area that has been underutilised, that people don't realise the benefits you can gain by planting bamboo where you've got an erosion problem and soil stability. I've seen it in China, literally mountains covered in bamboo and roads cut into the side of the mountains and those roads Usually, if you're along a riverbank or anything, they'll slip. But on a hole where the bamboo's growing and it's got the underground rhizome, it's a big, like a big web or a net, and that locks up the whole hill. It just, it just stabilises the soil. Quite often we get asked, you know, where does your bamboo go to? What do people use it for? And it can be anything, literally. A bamboo poles, we fitted out the uh, panda exhibit in Adelaide with the poles and we've sent poles down to the Antarctic every year. They use them for markers, and yeah, it just goes on and on. We even sell poles for people that may want to make floats. They punch the poles through a little die to get the dowels to make the fishing floats. We sell bamboo for screening, 
Most of the plants for the landscaping size plants go out to screen out your neighbours. 90% of what we sell is to screen out your neighbour. And we've got plants that'll do that in various locations right around the country. The other aspect of it is the edible shoots. Okay, what we've got, this is what we call the Dendrocolumus asper. It's one of the major shoot producers in Thailand. What you do to harvest this one as an edible shoot, you'll cut it off down near the base and then you just trim it up, chuck it in a pot, boil it up for about 10 or 15 minutes in salty water and there's your vegetable. With the developments of the Chinese in manufacturing industry with the bamboo, there's a huge expanded range of product available. Traditionally we were doing flooring, that we've been doing that for 18 years. We've diversified into bamboo ply. We've got bamboo ply sheets now available and they run from four millimetre to 50 millimetre thick. And they can be used for bench tops, kitchen fit outs, kitchen cupboards. So once again, it's all just limited to imagination of what you can do with the processed product. Because of the novelty of bamboo, I get a lot of media attention. And over the years, they've christened me Mr. Bamboo. Come on, come on, Bill. Come on, here we go, here we go. I swear if that dog chews any more bamboo, she'll turn into a panda. <laughs>